Hey, listen, welcome to Rauda's Vinyl Monday. It's yet another synthwave release. What do we have here for review? This one is Power Glove from uh, Australia, Melbourne. Pardon, I really can't do that Australian accent as much as I love it. This is playback and it's a double vinyl originally released in 2019. Comes with a classic cover. But this time, even though this is Electronic Purification Records, which always does a wonderful job with uh, vinyl releases, but uh, all kind of synth wave I've gotten from them, this is not a, um, what do you have, gatefold. This is just very simple, going back to basics kind of a vinyl. Looks cool though with the uh, lacquered logo and all that stuff. And I don't know about you, but this uh, cover reminds me so much of some 1980s violent movies, but also video games. Now, video games are also worth mentioning with this um, band because I guess they got mostly known for the Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon video game uh, soundtrack, which is good. The game is good also, but the, the soundtrack might be even better. And uh, this time they were doing almost like a fictional soundtrack to a movie that isn't a movie. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'll try to explain it here. Now, this is featuring, uh, this features a lot of uh, songs. And here on Bandcamp side, you can pretty much get the idea. You can see the information, availability and all that stuff. 16 tracks, which makes uh, sense that this is two, uh, two 180 gram double vinyl release. You really can't fit them all. So I see the years, yes, it's from the streets of future 2043. Uh, what in essence this means like, uh, this is how future would have sounded and looked like if it was done in the 1980s action movie. It could be some kind of a street fire movie from the 1980s. I mean, keep the cover a look or some kind of a Cobra sequel by Sylvester Stallone or some Van Damme movie. Cobra Kai, oh sorry, Carry the Kid, obviously, Part 7, or, I don't know, Top Gun Gone in the Future. There's so many possibilities to what kind of a uh, possible future there is. So this is kind of a retro futuristic album. I mean, after all, this sounds so much like how the soundtracks of 1980s sounded, but as if it was set into the future. Think movies like Escape from the New York, Escape from New York and all that stuff. Now, the style is very, very 1980s. I mean, that's kind of a given we're talking about modern synthwave albums. I mean, you have those probably real, authentic 1980s synthesizer, even older probably, but the point here is sounding like exactly the same like how it was back in the days by some synthesizer music, where we're talking about Giorgio Mortar, Jan Hammer, or any kind of old school synthesizer wizards, Jean-Michel Jarre and the like. And the uh, track list here with these 15 tracks, which is set here on the four different sides, that is album number one and two, and uh, two sides, there are different moods and moments. Some parts even have vocals, and luckily not too much, even though I love this last track, uh, sorry, second to last track, Secrets, featuring Ella Thompson. It's almost like a pop track, really, with a lot of synthesizer things going on, but... It is more a pop song than your typical synthesizer music with, you know, being just instrumental. But some of these are energy pumping and kind of giving you like action sequence feeling, whereas some of the songs are more like just creating the atmosphere. So it feels like an atmospheric uh, soundtrack so many ways. I mean, you have these different moods going on. Some are more like romantic parts. Some are more like intensity, like growing up, where is the murderer, killer, whatever, fighter? Is there going to be a boss battle? You get the kind of idea, especially if you come from a strong video game background as such as I, or from a strong movie background. Well, I guess I could include myself there as well. But definitely a lot of 1980s wipe. This could be even a soundtrack to series like, you know, uh, Stranger Things and the like, which are so retro in so many ways. But of course, they want to go for the real deal, that is real 1980s music. So to kind of uh, ensure the authenticity or whatever. But I think this is uh, doing good in those terms. Playback definitely sounds like 1980s in so many ways. It's not my favorite kind of uh, synthwave. First of all, I prefer my synthwave to go without vocals. I want it to keep more consistent in style, that is, more about certain kind of a mood. And this could be just like Manny Wise kind of a 
you know, uh, speedboats, you know, going through the uh, coastline or whatever, or maybe you're having a sunset while, you know, um, to live and lie in, to live and die in LA kind of a movie with just some drinks and all that stuff, or just, I don't know, some kind of a Miami sunset. But, no, different strokes for different folks, that's I keep saying. So some people will probably like that this is so diverse, so variety in themes and styles. But for me, I don't know, it's just too much with one go, especially when you have four different sides, so it's like a very lengthy one. Um, overall, it's very well done. Production is top-notch, can't really bitch about it, but it's just a music that could be so much better for me. And that is where my slight negativity comes into play. Now, if you like synthwave and you don't mind a little bit of robotic spoken vocals or a little bit singing, uh, then go for this. You will find uh, these links in the description box so you can just click on the Bandcamp site or whatever to get the feeling whether or not this is your cup of tea. I would say slightly recommending this one, but that kind of a requires you to have a soft spot for synthwave music to begin with. If you're new to the genre, there are probably better artists out there, be it Carpenter, Brute, or Perturbator, or things like that. But you decide for yourself, and I hope you like it. Give it a go, or not, up to you. This is Rauta, take care, and see you soon with more reviews coming your way.